In today's tutorial let's learn how to do the bead stitch and the bead stitch is used in the chevron and these are for chevrons, waves or ripples whatever you want to call it. It's going to go up and down. Look at the texture on this. This is really cool and we're going to be covering that next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial I'm going to be able to show you the stitch that I just talked about. And what we have is an example of all of the stitches being used at the same time in a particular sample. So what I've done with the white here, those are all the single crochets. So we have double crochets, half double crochets, we have crisscross, we have bobbles, front post, <laughs> modified front post trebles here. We have the herringbone stitch here and then we have the seed stitch right here in the back. In today's tutorial I'm going to be covering the particular stitch that is listed in this particular video. I'm going to show you how to do it but this is example how all of those particular stitches can work together in order to create a really amazing afghan. Now this afghan does have a, a front and the back side. You can also use this particular um, kind of sample for doing scarves and really the sky is the limit and in today's tutorial I'm going to explain a little bit more about how you can customize this in order to do a project of your own. So here's what it looks like and we have our example. It's going up and down and this is just a small swatch. So I had to do a small swatch in order to figure out all the math for you. I have figured this all the way out from a scarf size just like this all the way to a king size afghan. I've done the math for you to tell you exact chain count. But I want to make this an educational video because it's just easier to give you that information but if you don't really understand it then what's the point right? That's a video tutorial. So what we have is that each chevron equals a certain amount of chain stitches and in my particular pattern 28 chains will take you from one point all the way to the next just like you see here. And so then we have side edges that are a portion of just a section of each side. So what we have here in order to get one chevron you have to do 28 chains and then to, to stay in balance you have to add an extra 18 to your, to your list. So what we have here is that if you were ever to customize this and say that you wanted um, to do a different size you would, you would crochet in multiples of 28. So for example let's say I wanted three chevrons. You would go three times 28 stitches Okay, that'll give you a certain amount and then you will add 18 extra chains at the end of that in order to stay in balance. So it's just a very easy way. Now on my website I have figured out all of those particular uh, uh, chains to start for all of them. Now you're gonna think to yourself, wow some of those chains are huge and they are huge but you have to compensate that when you go up and down like so is that it's not really like a hundred chains straight across. It's if you did a hundred chains uh, straight across it would be longer but because you are going in an up and down motion you need more chains in order to make maintain that, that and that's why that there's so many extra chains. So on my website I have all of that information for you but if you want to customize it the secret answer is 28 for every one of the chevrons and then you just have to add 18 uh, chains at the very end in order to get your sides to be equal. You should also keep in mind that this afghan sample is a one sided sample. Not all of these stitches look great on the other side. So the bobble stitch for example it does not exist on the underside. Okay, you'll see that it's completely flat and also with the crisscross, the crisscross appears better in the front side than it does in the back side. So when you're doing this particular project I'm going to be telling you what is your front side and what is your back side so that you can know exactly where to start. Some of these stitches you have to start on the back side. It's called the wrong side technically in crochet but you have to start on the back side. For example, bobbins or bobbles like this only appear on the opposite. So as you crochet the bob bobbles pop in behind. So if I was to bobble along here in this direction the bobbles would appear on the back side. So every time I do a bobble I actually have to work on the back side so that it does pop out to the front side. So some of these stitches are just like that. The herringbone is like that. Um, the uh, modified front post trebles are like that. Uh, a lot of the half double crochets, single crochets and um, double or double crochets. <laughs> Did I say that already? Those don't matter but you have to just be conscious. So in the particular pattern I'm about to show you I'm going to have you mark what is the front side, what is the back side so that if you have to adjust and you have to know that then you'll know it right from the very beginning. So let's just uh, quickly review. It's going to be a five millimeter size H crochet hook. I've used Karen Simply Soft throughout this whole thing. That the beautiful colors are from that particular uh, line. So this is going to be a generic intro 
on all of the eight different videos because I'm going to show you how to get started. So you'll see here the blue is how I got started. You can see I did a perimeter in white so that's kind of added in afterward. But all of the, the intros for all of these eight are exactly identical and then once we start from that point we're going to then take you through all of the different examples and those are each listed as an individual video because you may not want to mix it and match just like so. This is also part of the Stitches Right uh, game that we're doing uh, on YouTube as well as Facebook and uh, we're just having fun of mixing and matching stitches at random and that's how this sample has come to be. So without further ado let's move on to the example that we want to teach you in today's tutorial. So let's get started. We're going to get you to do the first layer and it will be the chain plus we will also start then the double crochets and then from this point then forward we then move on to the example that is listed within today's tutorial. And insert that you know, onto my hook. So we have in the instructions in our website all the different chains that you would need for your size of project that you want to go. But today I'm going to show you a swatch sample. So as I mentioned there's 28 um, chains in one chevron plus 18 and that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm just going to uh, chain 28. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So in 28 this is one chevron. Okay this is without any sides on it at all. So that's one chevron. So I said that there has to be sides on it. So we're going to add another 18 chains. So let's add 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So if you were doing multiples so you would have done multiples of 28 and at the very end you'll add in your 18 in order to keep it in balance. So now I have one chevron and I have the enough chains to do both sides of the project. Let's move on to the next step. So now that you've gone all the way across we're now going to start and we're gonna uh, get our uh, chevron to be working right away. So we're going to count back from the uh, to the fourth chain. So count under. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. Turn the chain over and get the back hump only and double crochet into that. And this will create a beautiful finish on the other side of the on the bottom and double crochet. So the chaining of 3 and the double crochet would count as one stitch into the same one and this matters down in the future. So the next five are going to be one double crochet each. So let's count that out loud. So one and two and three, four and five. So what I like to do when I'm in this particular stage I like to look at it. So the first two are together. They're into the same stitch. So there should be five double crochets by themselves and there are. So that is going to be the side. So that this is going to be the side in, in a down direction like this. The next three are going to be three double crochets together. So how to do that is that you wrap the hook and going into the next chain is that going in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two, two loops and then hold. And you're gonna do that two more times. So yarn over go to the next stitch in, yarn over pull through, pull through two and hold. So now you got two there. You gotta do it one more time. So yarn over pull through, pull through two and hold. You should have four loops on your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those loops. And so now three double crochets just became together as one and this is going to be the coming down and then turning and going back up in the other direction like that. So that's how you do three together. The next twelve on your chain are going to be each double crochet and let's count that out loud. So we have one, two, three, and 
4 and 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12. So this will always exist when you're going in an up direction. So if your chain was a lot longer every time that you finish a 3 together the next section will all be 12 by itself and I like to just double check and count. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So once you get your 12 in the next one will be 3 double crochets into the same one and this is the top of the chevron. So every time you get to a top of a chevron there will always be 3 double crochets when you're moving across the first row. So every time you're gonna move in the down direction now go and until you get to the other side is that there will be 12 double crochets by themselves. So we went up on the other side with 12 going up but now you're gonna go 12 going down. So that was 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So do you get that? So every chevron going in the up direction is going to have 12 by themselves. At the top you'll have 3 into the same one and then there'll be 12 going down the other side. So I'm gonna count that 12 going down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So now we're at the bottom again. So the next 3 are going to be 3 together. Okay and you just do it how I showed you before. So you just gather them up and the 3 will be together. So if your chain's a lot longer the next section would, would be going 12 going back up and then your 3 at the top and then 12 going back down and you keep doing that until you get to the last little section just like this. So what you're going to do then and the final here is that the next 5 will be 1 double crochet each. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and this will leave you with 1 extra stitch which you're supposed to have and the final that you have will have 2 double crochets in it. And if I can just grab your attention before you take off on me here. So at the very fir first remember how we did that the chain 3 and the double crochet counts at 1. So on the other side the 2 being in there counts um, into one stitch as well. So this is what it would look like but your sample would obviously be a lot longer but you have the up and down motion now ready and now we can move on. But before we move on what I want you to do is that I want you to grab a spare piece of yarn and that spare piece of yarn is going to act as a stitch marker. So using a piece of stitch marker and just, just a piece of yarn what I want you to do the side that you just want to cross on I want you just in the edge here and I want you just to insert your hook in behind just a piece of the strand and just bring the yarn through. The, and this is just a stitch holder. This is just going to tell you that every time you do anything you will know what is the front side and what is the back side because once you get onto these projects sometimes it gets really confusing what is front and what is back. Okay? So this stitch marker right in the front will always tell me that this is always going to be the front side. The next part of this tutorial we're going to start and you're either going to have to watch out for the stitch marker uh, whether it's on the front or the back side and some of these stitches it doesn't even matter. But uh, just do that because it just makes it a lot more sense. Let's so let's move along and do the next part. So now we're going to figure out how to do the bead stitch and you can see it actually kind of looks like a bead and they look like they're floating in between 
some double crochets and these are really quite easy to make up. What you're looking at here is like a together stitch that's wrapped around the post. So you're going to do like two double crochets side by side and then the one, the next stitch is kind of like wrapped around the post of the second which makes it kind of turn over to its side. It's really quite amazing and I really quite enjoy this stitch. Never did it before until this project so you know that even me like an old dog can learn new tricks. So let's uh, get started on this. So for this particular stitch we're going to be doing bead stitching okay and there's going to be a single crochet and then bead stitch and then if you want to repeat the pattern it'll be single crochet and then bead stitch. So that uh, single crochet in between kind of frames it really quite nicely. Up to you if you really want to do that but um, that I would recommend it and that's why I've written it like that in the pattern. So let's uh, get up our sample and let's show you how to work on this one. So here's our sample I have marked with my stitch marker on what is the right side. So we have two uh, rows here that make up the bead stitch. You have single crochet and then you also have uh, the bead stitch itself. For this we want the bead stitch to be on the right side of the project. So we want it to be on the front side as you can see here. But we need to have a single crochet in there first. So if we put the a single crochet on the right side the bead stitch will be on the back side. So we want to make sure that when we go to start this we turn our work. Now if you never fastened on off your work when you did this you didn't, you didn't need to. Uh, for this one because when you go to turn around you'll be on the back side already anyway. So if you did fasten off let's just fasten back on and insert our hook into the beginning. So the first one is a single crochet. We have other videos so we're just gonna go into the very first one. We have other videos um, to show you different stitches with the same concept. Let's attach, chain one and single crochet into the very first one. And single crochet once more into that first one. Okay so your edges will always have two single crochets right in the first one and we're gonna move down and then move up with the chevron. So we're on the side so there's going to be five single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and five. And I know this is correct because when I look at it see how the three are grouped together. Here's the top of that stitch there's an empty and there's an empty here. So if I, if, if I was, this was the middle and there was no empty stitch here I know I was in trouble. So I need to do three together single crochet. So you're gonna go into the next one, yarn over pull, going into the next one, yarn over pull and going into the next one, yarn over and pull. You're going to pull through all four loops. So now we're gonna go up the hill and back down the other side. So whenever we go up the hill these are the long sections so you're only gonna have these short sections on the edge but everything else in between is gonna be long. There will be 12 single crochets by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve. And I know that's correct because I can see the top here there's three in there. The middle one has nothing in it and that is the absolute middle so there's gonna be three single crochets right in the middle one. So whenever you go down the hill and you're not on an edge you're only gonna have twelve single crochets by itself. So the next ones are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve. So I'm gonna pull up my work and I say okay that is correct because here is the middle one. Okay you can see how they're all coming together here. I have an empty stitch here which I needed and there's one on the other side. So the next three are, are together. The three single crochets together. And then you're, if you're on the middle part of your project so if you're going back up one of these big ones it's twelve just like you see here. Okay so you're gonna go up twelve. Top you're gonna have three single crochets and then twelve down the other side. So once you get to the side edge here there's going to be five single crochets by itself. So one, two, three, four and five and then you have the outside here and there's going to be two single crochets in the final stitch like so. 
Okay, so that is your single crochet line in order to do the bead stitch. So let's uh, begin and turn our work and start up the bead stitch row which I think you'll really love. So let's turn our work. So the bead stitch row is kind of, once you, you gotta really kind of play with it to get your mind wrapped around it. Um, I, f I struggled a little bit during the process but it's not because um, I'm silly. It's just because it's something different. So I never learned how to do this stitch until like yesterday when I started practicing. So we're going to chain up three. So one, two and three and the first one right into the first stitch is going to be a double crochet. So what I want to tell you here is that on the side edges there's only going to be two bead stitches and in the middle ones there's only going to be four bead stitches. But what we need to pay attention to is that we need to skip over stitches that are here on the section. So we just got to be very conscientious of that. So let me just take my time. So the next stitch is going to be a double crochet and now we're going to apply the bead stitch. Watch how I do it. To do the bead stitch we have to play within the last post that you just did. So what you're going to do is you're gonna yarn over and go through the side of the last post, yarn over and pull through. You're gonna do that three times. So just yarn over going into the same, between the same post and yarn over pull through and then yarn over going in and pull through and you have a total of seven loops on the hook. So when we go to pull this yarn through we want to pull them everything except for the final. So let's just do that. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through all of them but the last one and you will have two loops on your hook just like this. Yarn over and pull through the final like this. You are going to skip over the very next stitch that is available to you which is right here. Okay, see how this is the post? So you skip over the next post and the next one will be then a double crochet. I'm going to go through many times showing you how to do that so don't you worry. So we're going to double crochet in the next one and this is the, so the one that is right here is, is the framework and then this next one that I just did is kind of the one that's hidden in the bead. So let's begin the bead stitch again. So yarn over going into the side of the post, pull through, yarn over, side, pull through, yarn over, side, pull through. There's seven loops on the hook. Pull through all of them but the final loop Take your time with this. Okay, and then yarn over and pull through the final two like this. So we're going to skip the next stitch available to you and it is the middle section of the next here. So we're going to put in three double crochets together. So just yarn over, pull through. So there's lots to learn in this one. So let me just uh, show you that more carefully. So to do that you yarn over going into that next stitch. Okay. Yarn over into the next. So let me show you how to do that more carefully. So yarn over going into the next one. So you've got one skipped. So you're just yarn over next, pull through two and hold. Going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. And then the final one is the third one. Pull through, pull through two and hold. And now you have three loops back on your hook and what you just need to do then is that you need to just yarn over and pull through all three. So now we're gonna head up to the other side of this particular um, row. So every time we're going up the big slants this is what we need to do. We need to double crochet into the first one. Okay, so there's your framework and then the next one is where the bead is gonna attach. So it's a double crochet and we're gonna do our bead around this one. So yarn over in, pull through, yarn over in, pull through, yarn over in, pull through. And then yarn over, pull through everything but the final one so that you got two stitches left. Pull through, two loops left. So you're gonna skip the next stitch which is right here and then double crochet into the next. There's a total of four of these bead stitches all the way back to the top. So we double crochet into the next one and we're, that's where we're gonna bead around the, that one. So yarn over in and do that three times. Okay, yarn over, pull through everything but the final then yarn over and pull through the final two. Skip one stitch and then just double crochet into the next. And double crochet in the next. This is your next bead. This is around this one. So yarn over in. Just like that. Yarn over, pull through everything but the final. And then yarn over, pull again. Skip one stitch. Okay. 
So you're looking for a total of three of these beads from the bottom to the top here. We still have one more to do before I've gotten to the top and we just wanna continue to make them. Okay, pull through. Uh, so now this time is that we skip the next stitch and we go into the middle one of the three. Okay, so it all balances out nicely and we're gonna put in three double crochets. Just like that. So we're gonna head down the hill. So the first one is gonna be double crochet by itself and then the next one is gonna be where the bead is gonna attach to. So it's a double crochet and this is now the bead. So you just gotta pay attention to what happens after the valleys and after the, the hills on the top. Okay, skip the next one, double crochet in the next. Okay, double crochet in the next which is your next bead. So just make your bead. Okay, skip the next one, double crochet in that one, double crochet in the next one which is your next bead. Okay, skip the next one, double crochet in the next. So there's gonna be four of these beads going all the way down from the top of the valley. There's currently only three. So we're gonna do another one. I'm making your beads. Okay, so now that my bead is in, I just immediately, I'm going to jump and I'm gonna do my middle three. So just doing the three together again. Okay, so if you're going up then the big slants, just remember the first one is gonna be a double crochet by itself. The next one is a double crochet and then the bead will go around that, double crochet, bead and etc. and that's how you kinda do that. So when you get to the edge, there's a, just a short section here. So on the edge, the first one is a double crochet. It's just like it would have been is if we were um, is if we were down here. You see it's a double crochet so we're only doing a portion of this section here. Okay, the next one is a double crochet but we're gonna use that as a bead. I'm gonna retry that. So on the side edges here, there is a total of only two beads. Okay, skip one, double crochet in the next. There's still one more bead because I only got one of two in. So we're going to the next one, bead. Like so. And then you're gonna go into the final stitch for two. Okay, so there'll be two double crochets right into the final one. And that would be how you would do the bead stitch uh, doing this. So if you turn your work, you can just start off and do your single crochets back again and then you turn your work and you do the bead work up once again and it's a really quite a nice uh, effect when you look at several of these rows when they go up. They actually look quite amazing and this is the bead stitch. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd, yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya, bye bye.